Hello, viewers. Well, here we are now with part three of our Autosport International coverage. Now, uh, it, at every show, uh, simulation and uh, video games and simulation, should I say, are becoming more and more important for drivers, learning circuits, testing a car when not able to actually run it. The cost of running is so expensive now that simulators are becoming more and more important to the driver. One of them that came out last year as a professional level simulator is the Motion Simulations TL1. Let's take a look. So now on to simulation of course the TL1, Motion Simulations TL1 simulator was on display, I'm sure many of you who visited the show will have seen this, and very impressive it was too, there was also a, a, an overhead cam and the cam fell off just as I was starting to film it but it gave an exceptional view and you can see the three projectors inside, fantastic projecting on the screen, no pixelation. I've been doing some projector tests and I got in there, there was no pixelation at all. I don't know what the resolution was, I don't know what the projectors were, but they were perfect for that, for that view length, absolutely fantastic. So that's me jumping in, having a uh, chat with the guy who's told me that they've set it to automatic for the crowd there, so not to bother with the gear stick. Uh, do a few corners, have a muck about and then get on to your drive so now I've got a couple of laps exiting the pits uh, the track we all know and up the hill again I, I didn't know what car I was in I was, it turns out I was in an F1 car field of view isn't perfect here obviously the mirrors are a bit large at the side so I'd need to alter that field of view slightly but either way the idea that it wraps around is, is fantastic it actually felt a bit slower when I was in there than it actually looks here. It looks faster when you see those side images, but in, in the actual simulator it felt much slower for me. By the way, I'm um, just, just tentative at the moment, getting a feel for it again, what the car can do, uh, how quick you can get on the power, how quick it will lose traction. Obviously, as you guys know, it's a track I know well. So making a nice clean clean lap video for you guys so uh, I'm six foot just over six foot six uh, this uh, simulator suits people up to six foot ten which is very impressive I was very comfortable perfect for me uh, the screens were fantastic it had me turning my head looking into corners which is nice something I'm not really used to having uh, used a single screen and using a projector that's obviously full size makes a huge difference it really does it just transforms your your uh, driving experience and of course you can use any type of game you want to on here they've also done demonstrations recently using different types of simulations flight simulations everything else now it's uh, top of the range this is a very expensive piece of kit a bespoke wheel and pedals and steering setup and bespoke seats and everything everything is bespoke uh, specifically for this simulator this is top of the range absolute tip top of the range there's nothing else on the market uh, that's sort of in between consumer and professional level. Uh, the next step really is then you're going to the huge professional level simulations. It would be great to try something like this with motion, some kind of motion, uh, sim, sim vibe or something like that coming through because it wasn't obviously, but uh, it really was very impressive as we approach Eau Rouge up the hill. Uh, just a slight lift there I didn't know where the car would go and I thought I don't want to spin it off I want to get a couple of laps in here for you guys see all the action and if you have any questions do fire them at me I'll be uh, hoping to speak to the designer of it at some point I do speak to the wheel designer in a following section on the video he uh, makes the wheels for this system which are the basically proper racing wheels, all of them are. This is a very basic wheel you see on there, of course, at the moment. And they can fit on any wheel that, that you desire. So the system's very flexible, very impressive, and certainly, uh, you know, the most immersive experience I've had on any racing simulation. It just, I, I am somebody who can't stand bezels, uh, and that's why I haven't gone for triple monitor display. It just doesn't work for me. It, it, it's like a cuts me off from the, from the world essentially whereas here you've got a nice view it just still feels much more immediate using automatic gears actually I feel less stable when I'm using automatic than I do with uh, manual simply because it changes gears sometimes when you're in the middle of an apex you know or, or you know just when you least expect it and that can alter the, the, the wheel spin 
through the fast section before I, I actually get kicked out of the machine. That's always a nice flowing section. Can you imagine the commitment in a Formula One car going through there or a GT car? It must be absolutely immense feeling before then breaking down to that slow section. You've got to get that braking just right, throw the car into it. And again, another heavy braking here. You want to throw the car in, but you don't want to spin it out at the limit of grip. You just come off the brakes, turn the car in, hope you've scrubbed off enough speed, then get on the power. And now I get kicked out of the machine by the uh, guy there. But uh, let's have a listen to what the steering wheel maker had to say as well. Uh, I'm talking to Simon Hodgson, who's one of the designers on the wheels here. Uh, Simon, talk me uh, through the wheel, how you've come to this and put it all together. Uh, sure, well it's uh, a GT style rim. It's based on uh, the writer engineering GT wheel that they use in the GT1 and GT3 Lamborghinis in the World Series. Um, but it has uh, uh, custom controls based for PC simulations. So, rotary dials, push button switches, toggle dials and uh, paddles, paddle shifters on the back. And they, uh, they all wire up through the quick release system here and connects through the wheel to uh, the PC. Uh, it's a water cut carbon fiber plate. And then on the back, a CNC machined aluminium enclosure and spacer and aluminium paddle shifters as well. Um, so it's robust, solid, um, and can take a real beating, um, and hopefully will uh, be a reliable product for years to come. A very impressive wheel production there, and the uh, motion simulation is something we'll look at more in the future. Again, lots of simulators and experiences at the show, and something worth checking out for every type of sim racing fan, uh, bringing real racing drivers, getting them involved and giving them an idea of the experience on offer in some of these systems now. Very impressive. We'll be looking more at this later. So the TL1, very impressive, obviously using projectors, uh, really impressive to see in operation, very comfortable in the bespoke seat that they have as well. I was very, very impressed. I could have spent a lot more time in there before I was kicked out. Alas, it is the way of things. Uh, but there was many others on display. The Cruden simulator was on display, along with uh, a McLaren one. That was pretty poor, it has to be said. You couldn't even sit in the car. I didn't even try. I'm just too tall for it. Um, as well as a few others as well. And there's also the Racing Aces display, which would have been rammed on Saturday. If you did play on some of those, do let me know. And also, if you played on any of these simulators, give me your feedback, because it's always nice to see. I'll be running more and more of this uh, other motor shows in the future, hopefully. But uh, it was good to get this hands-on, and I'll be bringing you some more news when I have it. But that's it for part three of our Autosport International coverage. Now let's take a look at a show report in part four. Uh, we're going to be looking at a lot more of the sort of sports cars that are on display as well but as ever more soon